Hey guys, so today I'm going to go over your Unit 2 FRQ practice rubric with you. Um, and you should have already seen this rubric, so it's linked for you in the posted reply. Um, so after you go through this video, if you'll just reply to your own post and tell me what you've made, um, there are 15 possible points on this particular FRQ. It's a little bit lengthier. Um, so there's 15 possible points. And um, just a reminder on your actual AP test, the maximum you can get is 10, <laughs> 10 points on um, your FRQ. So some of your questions might have additional um, points built in. I don't think I've ever seen one with 15. I think like 12 or 13 is the most they do, but the most credit you can get are 10 possible points. But today you'll be grading yours out of 15 because there's 15 points here. All right, so let's take a look at number one. It says many species, including some whales and birds, will travel thousands of kilometers during an annual migration. Provide one reason a species may migrate a long distance. So you get one point for one of these, and you do have to have one of these answers. So limited food or water supply would lead to migration. Food supply migrates and species follow prey. Um, more hospitable climate during certain seasons. That's the one you guys should probably be familiar with, with the birds flying south for the winter. Availability of mates, breeding, birthing occurs in different locations, or protection of offspring from predators. So any of those would earn you a point. And for the hospitable climates, um, you don't necessarily have to have the word hospitable as long as you explain that like species are migrating for better weather. Question two says pollination by native insects is considered an ecosystem service. Identify a different ecosystem service and explain how that service will benefit human society. So remember, we talked about ecosystem services in our first lesson of this unit. So you can get two points here, one point for the identification and one point for its linked benefit. Only the first answer is scored. Okay, so I'm not going to read this whole chart to you because you do have this in the rubric. You have this exa exact same form um, linked on your um, in your assignment for the day. But the ecosystem service is listed on the left, so you just have to have one of these, and it does need to be one of these. And then you need to have the appropriate benefit as well for both points. So if you identify it but don't get the benefit, you can still get one point. Um, and then if you list a benefit, but you don't list it with the correct ecosystem service, you can also get a point. And these are the benefits listed for each ecosystem service, but you don't have to have all of them. You just need one. So you could say that an ecosystem service is control of pests with natural predators, and the benefit would be reduced crop losses, and that's all you would need, okay? But you just need two of these in order to get the two points. So one service and one correct benefit for that service. Question three says biological diversity or biodiversity has become a topic of great concern among conservationists. Biodiversity is often used by scientists and policymakers to help determine the health of ecosystems. Describe two characteristics shared by ecosystems that have high biodiversity. So there's two points here, one point for each description of the characteristic. So biodiverse ecosystems contain large numbers of different species, large number of individuals of different species, complex food webs, greater genetic diversity, variety of an ecological roles and niches, and abundant resources. So if you have two of any of those listed on the screen, you can get two points. If you only have one of those correct, then you will get one point. So you can get up to two there. B says describe two ecological benefits that greater biodiversity provides. And again, two points, one for each. Pollination, water air filtration, stability and survivability of ecosystems, control of pest species, more source material for evolution, and soil microorganisms can contribute to nutrient cycling, leading to higher primary productivity. So again, two points possible, one for each correct, and it does need to be two of these. Okay, these are the acceptable answers. Number four says species such as the dusky seaside sparrow, the passenger pigeon, and the woolly mammoth are extinct. Populations of other species have declined to the point where they are designated as threatened or endangered. Identify one threatened or endangered species and explain why its population has declined. Um, so we haven't necessarily talked about endangered species yet, like in particular, um, but this is something that you could research or 
um, for these FRQs, a lot of times, again, we don't have all the information we need at this time to answer everything efficiently. Um, so if you were doing this, this is something that you could look up um, for an assignment during class. But you can get two points maximum, so one point for each identification. Um, general names are not accepted. So you can't just say whale or owl unless all members of the group are endangered. So the elephant, like all species of elephants are endangered, so you could just say elephant, but like not all whales are endangered, so you can't just say whale. Um, so examples of species accepted, giant panda, elephants, whooping crane, manatee, rhinoceros, California condor, bald eagle, western lily, woolly spider monkey, Florida panther, blue whale, and Galapagos tortoise. tortoise. And then one point earned for each explanation. So habitat alteration, human encroachment, fragmentation, conversion, simplification, um, or identify the specific habitat. So bamboo forest needed for the giant panda is being destroyed. <coughs> Hunting or poaching for a specific reason. Inability to compete with non-native or invasive species pollution, and pest control. And again, a lot of these examples are things that you don't have the knowledge of yet, um, so we just have to do the best we can until we hit all of our units and get everything that we need. B says, describe three characteristics of organisms that would make them particularly vulnerable to extinction. So three points maximum here, and only the first three are graded. So if you put more than three, you only grade the first three. So here are some acceptable ones. Specialized feeding behavior food sources, requires a larger territory, preys on livestock or people, competition, no natural defenses, fixed migratory patterns, specialized reproductive behaviors, limited geographic range, specific behavior patterns, exploited for economic value. It's a case strategist, which we haven't talked about yet, but we will. Um, fed at high trophic le levels, so with biomagnification, Large size, slow speed, limited range of tolerance. This would be the one that we've talked about recently. And small population linked to lack of genetic diversity, also related to what we've gone over in this unit. Okay, so any two of those would be acceptable and get you two points. And it says present three arguments in favor of the maintenance of biodiversity. So any of these three will do, you get one point for each one. So ecosystem function and or stability based on a specific reason, such as organism's role in the food web, the role as a pollinator, or the role in nutrient cycles. So we do know about our uh, nitrogen-fixing bacteria. Um, future medical resources, future food resources, economic potential, genetic bank, recreation, scientific value for research, scenic and aesthetic value, Remember, these are all ecosystem services. Symbolic or religious value, intrinsic value, ethical reasons, provides resources for indigenous, indigenous human populations, and minimizes spread of infectious diseases. All of those are ecosystem services that you could use as um, an argument for um, ecosystem conservation or maintenance of biodiversity. Okay? So, again... This is similar to how you'll probably feel on your AP exam, because especially for the endangered species, like specifically, we didn't talk about specific endangered species, so you're not going to know all of the info on these exams. You, you just, you won't. Um, there'll be some information that we just don't have time to cover and we won't hit, um, so don't freak out. Again, the national average is a 5 out of 10, and that will get you a 3. So if you can average a 50% on your test, you can make a 3. So I don't want you to think that, you know, if you're not making 10 out of 10s on all of these, that you won't be successful on your test, because you will. Um, but if you have any questions on these in particular, most of it we did cover in terms of ecosystem services and biodiversity. But if you have any additional questions, just let me know. Um, and if not, I will catch you guys in the next one.